The world was never a safe place in absolute terms. Uh, there were always some extremists, radicals, even fanatics. But the difference is, and our challenge is, to get them at the margins of society, not at the mainstream, and to eliminate space uh, at maximum for fanaticism, ra radicalization, or violent extremism. And this is an uh, invitation for all of us to, to work upon, because allies of evil or allies of terror are many, but three are very strong and influential. It's indifference, ignorance, and fear. If in society indifference is dominating, people don't care, then the extremism is growing. If they are not informed or knowledgeable or they don't want to know, then I must say ignorance breeds intolerance. And if they are scared, then it's easy to govern, to rule over the people, but not through people, with people, for people. Freedom of religion is uh, actually freedom of thought, freedom of conscience, religion or conviction. And this is the, the basic expression of human freedom, which goes on with other freedoms in civil or political life. If the freedom of conscience is oppressed, limited, then freedom in political or civil life are limited or oppressed as well. So it's a litmus test of uh, human rights. And we need to care about uh, not only human rights, but uh, basic freedoms. Uh, Europe is a good place for living, but not uh, ideal or without mistakes or problems. But freedom of religion on this continent is uh, very important, crucial for future of Europe and also for future of the world, because Europe is very influential in both directions world wars, world um, uh, ideologies came out from this uh, continent. Holocaust was here, bloody borders, bloody division of the continent. And now, through reconciliation, reconstruction and cooperation, we have a community based on rules, on values, on common interests. Not perfect, not ideal, but real and inspiring. And again, religious freedom is part of this reality. And again, uh, uh, a compulsory jurisdiction of the supreme body, court in Strasbourg, over human rights under convention, is uh, European uniqueness. Mm. So either we take it seriously or it's uh, something problematic. But I think that first we have to take seriously our uh, system of human rights protection. On the other side, I have mixed feelings from this decision because it can create uh, a lot of uh, misinterpretation or misunderstanding. We shall see how it will be implemented. But again, religious freedom uh, proportional to what uh, public life uh, in freedom means is important for each country, for each company, for democratic society, for plurality. Secular state should not replace religions, should not impose secularism as ideology but be fair referee, fair space, space opener for plurality. And in plurality, these symbols are part of um, not only identity, but also uh, expression, freedom of expression, living together. I think that uh, we have to, uh, again, respect our rules, but work towards um, freedom which is uh, uh, taken as a litmus test of living in dignity. Uh, if it is uh, um, over-politicized or not respected or secularism replaces religion, then we have Burkini case in France. Mm. Where the ban connected with the religion is uh, uh, in place, but fortunately, ju judiciary decided uh, differently. Sometime uh, habits or um, uh, lifestyles uh, tend to become a doctrine. Uh, we need to have fair treatment of all, minorities, majorities. And plurality uh, is possible and the best solution when human dignity is criterion and objective of our policies, whether we speak on behalf of judiciary, of executive power, 
or a legislative power. Human dignity for all and everywhere. It's a pioneering work, uh, not easy uh, for many reasons, because the world is moving and uh, quite uh, dramatic situations uh, connect in connection to religious uh, freedom in the world. Uh, we see discrimination, we see intolerance, but also persecution and even genocide, which is crime of crimes. My position was created especially because there is uh, an ongoing uh, genocide, mass killing, very focused systematic liquidation of religious and ethnic minorities at the Middle East under the dominance of ISIS, Daesh. So in a way this uh, function is connected uh, with the invitation to stop, to prevent, to protect and to punish. To prevent uh, mass atrocities, to protect victims and to punish perpetrators. Europe uh, is also full of problems connected with migration and refugee crisis. Uh, I think that after one year we can say that um, this policy is meaning meaningful and um, important. I can say it because I visited several countries where religious is present uh, uh, everywhere and influential in public life. For example, Jordan or Iraq or recently Sudan. Uh, in Iraq, I was happy that uh, leaders in the religious or public domain are able to speak about their future as a civil state based and organized around citizenship, not around the religion. Uh, religious freedom, which is my role to promote, uh, is important for all, but cannot uh, be a kind of replacement of religious dominance by the majority or by some over the others. Um, in many countries there are strange detrimental legislative uh, acts uh, on blasphemy or anti-conversion where people changing their faith are threatened by not only punishment but capital punishment, threatened on their lives. There are countries where blasphemy is also sentenced by, by death penalty. There are countries where totalitarian regimes don't allow people to live freely their lives. Uh, tendency is negative. So the reason for European Union to be uh, and to become again protagonist of freedom of religion or belief is our own interest but also contribution to better century. A uh, century with less genocides and more uh, humanity to dominate. Yes, precisely. 100 years ago it started with the Bolshevik Revolution in, in Russia. And it uh, divided the world. There were so many bloody uh, victims. And uh, I must say that the most uh, oppressive dictators were atheistic dictators of the 20th century. I will name only four of them. Uh, Josef Vissarionovich Stalin, Adolf, Adolf Hitler, Mao Zedong, and Pol Pot. Uh, so what I want to say, um, communist regimes uh, like one in Czechoslovakia uh, replaced uh, religious freedom by the dominance of militant atheism or Marxism-Leninism. And it oppressed people. My name, Jan Figel, belonged uh, to my uncle young brother of my father who was killed in the 50s by the secret service of uh, then communist Czechoslovakia. So for me and my family, this is part of experience, of reality. Uh, and uh, for us, a return to Europe, to common uh, uh, and free uh, continent, uh, was through the fight for human dignity and uh, human rights. Uh, it helps me. It helps me to understand the human rights uh, defenders in the world. It helps me to understand the role of uh, religion to sustain pressures of totalitarian ideology or, or regimes. And it also helps uh, uh, me to uh, communicate these stories because it's possible to go through velvet revolution, spiritual revolution. These were the names used in Czechoslovakia or Central Eastern Europe. 
the, the change without the bloodshed. Because only revenge, only eye for eye means we end all blinded. Uh, European uh, reality, common Europe, United Europe is based on reconciliation connected with justice against Nazi perpetrators. So we need justice for peace, but we need also reconciliation, not just repetition of the past stories or balances of powers. And then, of course, work on a community where human dignity is in the center. It's objective of policy, criterion of policy, and road towards future. And I'm happy that in the European Union, this is not a question or problem. This is the first value in the European Charter. Human dignity in Arabic, karama, karama, nice word, uh, unites my talks when I am in, in uh, many uh, Islam-majority countries. They need to understand <coughs> that these values are not Eurocentric, are not Western only. They are global, universal. The picture is very uh, um, manifold or, or colorful in the world because uh, totalitarian regimes persecute those who oppose, whether they are religious or non-religious people. In Saudi Arabia, atheists are persecuted. Um, Christians are the biggest part of the global population, so they also represent the biggest portion in numbers of persecuted, especially by some and in some countries, like by Islamic State organization, which is non-religious, it's not a religion, it's a, a brutal abuse of religion. Equally, Boko Haram, Al-Qaeda, Taliban, and other non-state actors. And then there are countries where Mus Muslims are uh, persecuted uh, by governments, by militants, or even militaries. For example, um, Rohingya Muslims in Myanmar, or by mobs of uh, people, um, Ahmadi Muslims in Pakistan. So uh, Muslims are also uh, persecuted in many parts of the world, um, but not only. I received uh, here in Brussels um, Tibetan leader, uh, Dalai Lama. Uh, Buddhists suffer in some countries as well. And nationalistic Buddhists uh, persecute Christians and Muslims in uh, Myanmar or in other parts of the world. So picture is uh, very colorful and what we need to once again uh, stress, diversity cannot and shouldn't be problem because it's a definition. We all are different, not only in this room, in this building, in the city, but in this world. It's a definition, it's a constructional and constitutional element. But diversity can work in unity only when we respect each other by equal dignity, whether we come from royal family or from homeless ambient. And this principle is not Eurocentric again, it's global. And Europe should be a protagonist of this uh, unity in diversity. We try to, to live it, it's not easy, but it's in inspirational and its contribution to more human 21st century. 20th century or the previous century uh, was full of atrocities, full of bloodshed uh, and, and bloody lessons. Last year, German Bundestag, which is non NGO, but important parliament of important country, declared that uh, mass killing of Armenians in 1915-1916 constituted genocide by the Ottoman Empire. They did it after 100 years. But it's important that this declaration was adopted. It's important that we accept our history, learn from history, remember the history, and act in a better, uh, uh, more responsible, more mature manner. Because since then, Holocaust happened, uh, Srebrenica in Bosnia, Rwanda, Lebanon, Cambodia, uh, many repetitions of the uh, liquidation of the others based on religion or race or nation or uh, ethnicity. And we said in Nuremberg, never again. The reality was again and again, we abandoned, we forgot. We have been weak in uh, keeping the promise uh, alive. 
And either we end this century of genocides because we learned and we do what is needed, or it will go on. And I think our role is to end this century and start more human time. And freedom of religion, first ever special envoy, but also other decisions in the European Union, for example, are very important for this non-material part of our agenda. Economy is like daily bread, it's necessity. But what makes people happy or what uh, brings sense to our living and our relations is culture. So this cultural awareness, uh, cultural diversity, but also ability to respect the others equally in dignity, this is the answer. And Europe should be protagonist of this approach.